Hi everyone, I'm Melissa with Midnight Hour Oil. I wanted to come out today and share yet another encouraging dream with you that I was given uh, back on December 9th. And this dream follows uh, the same theme of a lot of the other dreams I've been being given and uh, concerning going into a room or Isaiah 26, 20. And I'm going to share the dream and then I'll share with you what I believe the dream means and basically I feel that the Lord is just confirming that we are really close church to that time uh, when we are going to go to be with the Lord the, when he is going to come and take his bride off of this earth and I'm going to share some scriptures with you that um, the Lord gave me revelation on that pertain to this so in this dream I was given I arrived in Hawaii with my husband and I don't know how we got there. I just showed up and I had no baggage. I had no luggage. And there was a woman who showed up at the same time that we did. And she also had no baggage or luggage. Okay. So Hawaii is often referred to as paradise. So I believe Hawaii symbolizes uh, a, a heavenly type place. All right. And the woman that also had no baggage. Now baggage would, would be symbolic of the cares of this world, the struggles, the things that we carry around that weigh us down. She and I didn't have that. So I believe she is symbolic of the church, the faithful church. We were um, separated from the cares of this world. So anyway, then I said to my husband, we arrived one hour earlier than when we left. Now, when you're traveling, if you cross over time zones, you know you can actually leave at like 10 a.m. and get somewhere at uh, 9 a.m., something to that effect. And I don't know what that means other than Jesus did prophesy that, you know, in the last days that if the, the days were not shortened for the sake of the elect, no one would survive. So we all know there's something that's going to happen concerning time. I don't understand exactly what, but maybe that's what this has to do with. Okay, we arrived one hour earlier than when we left. Okay, so then the the woman and I, uh, who I believe is symbolic of the, the faithful church, went to get some things that we were going to need and check into the hotel. And so we, we went into the lobby of the hotel and we met with the owner of the hotel. Now, I believe this owner of this hotel was Holy Spirit. And we were being assigned rooms, given rooms, and I was actually surprised we were able to get in so early. You know, normal check-ins are pretty late these days for a hotel, but we were there early. And the hotel owner explained that in this hotel, you don't make reservations, that uh, the rooms are assigned on an as-needed basis. And so we showed up, we needed a room, and so we got one. So I said to the owner of the hotel, how long am I going to be here? Which is very strange that I asked about my itinerary, uh, but that's why I believe the owner is the Holy Spirit. And I was told that I would be there for three nights. Okay, in this hotel room, in this paradise for three nights. And then the hotel owner said, and then you'll be going to where your daughter is for seven days. Now my daughter, the next place she is going to be where I will meet her is up in my hometown for a Christmas family celebration gathering. So three days in paradise, seven days at a family gathering. Okay, you can kind of see the picture emerging here. Now the three day time frame that I was shown I was in paradise or would be in paradise, I believe is symbolic of like a time when the church will go into a transitional period and then come out into uh, something new where we receive our glorified bodies. Just like when Jonah went into the whale belly of the whale for three days and three nights. And when he came out, it was like a resurrection from the dead. And then Jesus went into the belly of the earth for three days and nights. And when he came out, okay, he had his glorified body. I, I feel like that three days uh, is symbolic of the same thing that we as the church, uh, when we go into the room, when we go into that time, with the Lord, all right, that special time that we, that's when the transition takes place. And then when we come out, before we go into the seven day wedding feast, uh, we will have our glorified bodies and be the new creation that Paul spoke of. 
after I woke up from that dream and I was contemplating the meaning of, of the, the different elements, the one thing that's really standing out is the word room, all right? Now, in Isaiah 26, 20, which I was led to in a, a dream I had been given back on, uh, let's see, November 30th. In that dream, I shared uh, how I was telling my mother-in-law, who I believe was symbolic of Israel, that if she didn't stop behaving the way she did, that I would leave and she would not see me again, all right? And... I told her about the 26 years I had been married to her son and that she, I had to continuously forgive her over and over. So I was led to Isaiah 26, 20. And of course that scripture we most understand pertains to the rapture of the church. And I'm going to read it real quickly because I feel like rooms are a really important element in these dreams I'm being given. Okay. So verse 20 of Revelate, or I'm sorry, of Isaiah chapter 26 come my people enter your chambers and shut your doors behind you hide yourself as it were for a little moment until the indignation is past so we understand that scripture to mean that the church is going to be hidden during the time of jacob's trouble and so now that the room i just had this sense to look up what that word meant and see if it correlated to a Jewish, the Jewish wedding traditions. I had been listening to Chuck Misler teach on the Jewish wedding traditions. And he, when he said that after the bride and groom are married, they go into something called a hoopah, which is where they consummate the marriage and spend this intimate time together. And then they come out and go to the seven day wedding feast. I started to think, could the word rooms in or room chamber that's used in Isaiah mean anything to do with a, a hoopah like that these dreams the Lord's giving me are showing me we're going into the hoopah with the Lord and then on to the seven day wedding feast so I I pulled up a online concordance and lo and behold uh this is what it said concerning the uh, the root word used in Isaiah 26 20 and it actually gave other root words that that are the meaning where the word room is used in the Bible. And, and many of them are different, like tent, abode, uh, construct. But when it, this is what it said about Isaiah 26, 20, read, read probably, and then it gives like uh, Hebrew letters, bridal chamber. So I believe the Lord is specifically showing us that the room that we enter into all right prior to the the wedding feast is the bridal chamber and i had i was talking to a friend of mine Joni Stahl, and she has a lot of knowledge about the jewish history and traditions and she was saying that when the bride and groom are married in a jewish wedding they have one hour to spend alone together before they go into the, the seven day wedding celebration, that one hour, that's like what Chuck Misler was talking about, that hoopa time. And so I believe that all of these dreams that are pointing to the time in the room coming up, the doors getting ready to be closed, is pointing to that time, church, when the Lord is going to take his bride and we're going to have a very special time with him. And and I was shown it was like paradise, okay? And the fact that we were there an hour early may just mean that it's going to happen sooner than many of us think it's going to happen or something concerning time. I don't know, but it's coming. And I have honestly never been given so many dreams with the same theme in such a short period of time. I mean, I've, I added it up in a six week period of time. I have had four dreams relating to, um, uh, either leaving, being sealed, and ready for takeoff, uh, or going into a room, or take, being taken into a room. And then so specifically in this last dream I had, where three days in, in this room and then seven days at a family gathering, it just seems to me it's uh, the Lord confirming that it's coming it's coming fast, earlier than we may expect. So I'm not saying I have a time frame. All I'm saying is, 
church, we need to be looking up. We need to be waiting and watching for our Lord to come and, and get us. And when I share these dreams, and I have been sharing a lot of rapture-related dreams lately, I, I get comments sometimes, people who, uh, they'll say there's no pre-tribulation rapture or whatever. And in these videos that I'm doing right now, I'm, I'm doing them with the understanding that most of my viewers have that understanding and knowledge of the scriptures uh, of a pre-tribulation rapture that is bedrock in scripture. But if you are somebody who does not know about the pre-tribulation rapture, maybe this is something you've not heard about or haven't heard anybody present the biblical uh, truth concerning this pre-tribulation rapture, uh, please take time to go watch a video I did, I don't know, three years ago, and it's called Pre-Tribulation Church Rapture 101. And in that video, I actually lay out all the scriptures uh, concerning a pre-tribulation rapture. So I just, I hope, I pray that this message encourages you, church, and uh, that right now you're taking that time to just really focus on the Lord and focus on uh, making yourself ready for his return. And uh, my friend Rhonda Empson just did a video and she was talking about, you know, if, if there's anybody that you fear will be left here or that you know isn't saved, and you've felt like you should talk to them or pray for them or write them a letter, now's the time to do it. You don't want to put that off any longer. If you've wanted to do a left behind letter or if you wanted to leave some Bibles behind for people who you think might be able to uh, get into your home and, and benefit from that, now's the time to get those things ready and, and have them out where people can find them. I Again, I don't know when the rupture is going to happen, but I don't believe we have a lot of time left, church. And so let's be sober-minded. Let's be waiting and watching as we were commanded to do. And as always, it is my prayer that we will all continue to keep our lamps burning bright while we wait for Jesus. I love you all. God bless you.